<sighs> I gotta be honest, guys. I don't really know what to say here. It's like I don't even know which way is up anymore. I mean, I looked in the right direction, but I think you get what I mean. Okay, so Marseille claims that its special M cables can improve image quality for both games and video content. But surely it's snake oil. I mean, the claims on the box couldn't possibly be true, could they? Well, we've done literally hours of video capture so you can see for yourself. Corsair's Void Pro gaming headsets feature microfiber mesh fabric and memory foam ear cups, as well as custom tuned 50 millimeter neodymium drivers. Check them out at the link below. From the get go, the M cable stands out as a, a little different from the other HDMIs. On one end, an HDMI connector labeled source. Okay, I'm with you so far. Then on the other end, an HDMI connector and a USB connector? Well, what it turns out is that this is to power the digital signal processor that Marseille claims to have designed from the ground up for video processing and then built into the cable. I mean, to say that my BS detector got triggered would be a gross understatement. We all, I mean, literally everyone in the office, thought that this thing would be great fodder for our useless tech over a hundred series. I mean, look at the obviously faked results in the marketing materials. I mean, if, if, if those are real, you are getting some magic grade upscaling on the cinema one. And for the gaming edition, you're getting anti-aliasing without any performance loss. Spoiler alert, it is not as good as the box might indicate, but don't turn that dial, folks. This one gets real interesting. Before we get to testing, though, a setup guide. M cables upscaling only works if the output matches the content resolution. So for a 480p game or movie, you have to actually set your TV or monitor to that resolution rather than just stretching it to your native one in software. Second, the M cable cinema's 1080p to 4K upscaling relies on detecting a 1080p 24 FPS signal. This is their film mode recognition feature. Starting with the gaming edition. Hmm. At native resolution, their processing isn't doing the Windows desktop any favors. That's a drawback. Now, let's fire up some games at... What the frack? This is Rise of the Tomb Raider at 720p. You're seeing this, right? It looks like anti-aliasing is on. Well, okay, let's just grab a regular HDMI cable and... Wait, s seriously? And this is not isolated to Tomb Raider. We're looking at significantly smoother diagonal lines across the board. And look at these cables at the beginning of the Deus Ex Mankind Divided benchmark. At 1080p, the improvement is noticeable as well, if a little smaller. So it looks like it's not just upscaling, but actually providing AA and pretty decent anti-aliasing at that. I mean, compared to running 8x MSAA on your video card in Deus Ex, we're not quite there, but we're doing way better than FXAA and stacking 8x MSAA with the M cable gives us even better results. As for running two M cables in series though, most people probably wouldn't like the over sharp effect, but CSGO players take note of these shimmering model outlines. Let's go back to one cable then, but let's throw some older games like Quake 2 or Unreal at it. <laughs> Whoa! At 480p, the difference is night and day. It basically looks like 720p. And at 720p, it's not as dramatic, but the improvement is there. So at this point, we were thinking, well, okay, the lower the resolution, the better then, right? Well, 
while an M cable would go great with a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 2 even on an HDMI converter, unfortunately, you can only go back so far. Super Mario World really didn't look its best with the M cable's current scaling algorithm anyway, and we think one with a scanline generator or pixel art scaling like HQX built in would make it much more ideal for retro gaming. Assuming that Marseille's claims with respect to input lag hold true. And actually more good news. If there's any lag, our 240 FPS camera can't detect it. So that's another win for M Cable's marketing. So other than the still clearly faked screenshot comparisons on the box, the gaming edition somehow passes the snake oil test. But what about the cinema version? At 480p upscaled to 1080p, anime really sees a major bump in visual fidelity. Although color banding can get exacerbated somewhat. Pay particular attention to the lines of Inori's face and the cracks in the ground. Big Buck Bunny sees significant smoothing of its blockiness, especially around the edges of objects, which is what we'd expect from this filter by now. And as for a 480p YouTube rip from Brandon's Red Weapon review, take one look at the difference in this scene with Max in the forest and tell me that that doesn't look significantly better. When shown these results, the universal response at the office was, <clears throat> and I quote, what the f That's 480p? Are you sure you didn't mix it up? Yeah, we're sure. As for 720p, sharpened edges still give the edge, haha, <laughs> to the M cable in anime, while Big Buck Bunny sees details that were fuzzy in 480p's upscale that now look relatively sharp. And meanwhile, our red capture still looks pretty good at 720p on its own, but depth and sharpness of smaller details both get a big boost. Check out the reflection on Max's eyes and her hair in this shot. At 1080p, unlike the gaming edition, the sharpening effect just isn't as necessary or pronounced. But what it does do is remove blocking artifacts and improve the dynamic range of compressed content. Since 1080p content typically has fewer artifacts on YouTube than lower resolutions, we're seeing a more pronounced effect, which is great news for internet streaming. When upscaling to 4K, our 1080 footage looks noticeably sharper compared to a normal HDMI cable's 1080p output, and here we can see clear improvements on small details like Max's hair, though compared to true 4K output, there is visible fringing on the edge of her face. So it's not as good as clean 4K, but definitely better than 1080p. Now A Prime helpfully pointed out that these are all things that he could do with Premiere and Photoshop. But until he can do it to 24 to 60 scenes per second without a noticeable delay, I'll continue being impressed by the M cable. Leading us to the conclusion then. These things actually work, but would I recommend them for 150 US dollars? With a couple of improvements, it actually becomes a no brainer. I'd like to see a scalar toggle on the gaming edition so that it doesn't mess with my text on the desktop, and I'd like to see flashable firmware with specialty filters for certain applications like retro gaming, but there are definitely folks out there that I'd recommend it for today, like anime fans with large, low resolution collections, console gamers, as long as you don't go too retro, and anyone who does a lot of web content streaming. Keeping in mind, of course, the display resolution caveat. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but great job, Mercer. It doesn't go down like this often, but you shocked us. Mastrop is the place to go to get great deals on curated items sourced by the community for the community. And this one looks pretty freaking awesome. This is the Mastrop Vast Curved Gaming Monitor. It's 35 inches corner to corner. It features an ultra wide resolution of 3440 by 1440, two milliseconds response time, free sync, 
For you AMD users out there, support for a 100 hertz refresh rate, a 2500 to 1 contrast ratio, and it's available right now through MassDrop for only $549.99. Whoa. So check it out at the link below. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.